tumble, you don't want anything around. So just, just be aware of that. Safety first. Save that blanket for later. And then come to a cross-legged. Now you can try half lotus. That means that usually the right heel of uh, the left heel comes in and then the right foot comes up and on top. So it's almost like a little bit of a a tur a turning of the ankle or a flexing of the ankle and the top of the right foot rests into that left calf. That's a half lotus. That might be something you can start to try. There's always the more traditional sukhasana, which is the heel heel to alignment, both feet are down and you've got this alignment or for some of us crossing the ankles is the best way. I will tell you, I will encourage you once you start to do the sukhasana or half lotus, that's actually more comfortable because then you're not compressing your ankles, but do what you need to do. And the palms rest on the knees. Good. Feel the spine. Feel the top of the head lifting straight up. Feel your heart lifting up a slight lifting up and maybe a slight tucking in of the navel just below the navel a slight pulling in and then a very subtle lifting up and then the shoulders drop palms rest just breathe deeply here and then drop your chin towards your heart And then just slowly start to, we're not going all the way back, just tilting one ear towards one shoulder and then slowly rolling, to, ooh, I felt that one, towards the other shoulder. So we're just giving ourselves a chance to open up that upper neck. These trapezoids that really get hammered from the Maybe if we use computers in our work in the day, this is something good to do every day. I should remind myself to do it every day because I need it. Just keep going at your own slow pace. Just a gentle rocking back and forth. Oh, should feel good, hopefully. You can even add a little swaying of the torso if that's happening in your movement. So we don't have to stay rigid and upright necessarily. We can give ourselves permission to sway a little bit back and forth. Oh. Good. And then slowly come back to center and inhale your head back up and then Bring you, interlace your fingers behind your head. Good. <clears throat> and then as you inhale, pull the shoulders back, tilt your head back slightly, inhale back. And then as you exhale, exhale, tuck your chin, elbow squeeze together. And then inhale back up. And then exhale. Exhale forward. Inhale back up. Exhale forward. We'll do some hip stuff in October. I mean, we're not going to just do spinal. We're not just going to focus on spinal twists and back bends for anybody that came in a little later. That's the focus of October is spinal health spinal health one more time exhale down and then release the hands from the back of the head good bring the hands in front of the hearts and then inhale the hands up look up and then as you exhale drop your left hand to the ground and your right arm comes over reaching over
if you did it the other side, it doesn't really matter here. You get the idea. Really reach through that top pinky. Spin that pinky towards the ground. Really reaching. Feel the lengthening. Feel that rib cage on that extended side open. Maybe even roll that rib cage open a little bit more. Keep breathing. And on your next exhale, push through that hand that's on the mat and slowly reverse everything. I can't, I always forget if I have my video reversed. Hopefully this look, this is not normal. Uh, it makes sense to you so your right arm is on the ground, your right forearm is on the ground, or maybe just your right hand, and then reach your left arm over. But maybe I've got my video so that it looks so I don't have to reverse my commands. I don't know, I'll figure that out. We'll figure it out. And then reach that top arm, reach through the pinky, straighten. That's going to activate that, the rib cage opening, breathe into it. Spin that rib cage open a little bit more towards the sky. Reach the pinky, spin the pinky down towards the ground. Reach, breathe into it. And then as you exhale, come back. Wow, that was weird. The, my video screen kind of did something there. It was odd. It's weird stuff going on with the internet today, apparently. Bring your hands in front of your heart. Just do an ohm if you're at home. If you can do an ohm out in the open or just do it internally quietly. It's ah, oh, mm, three parts, ohm. Um. Take a deep breath in. day. Everything that matters is right in the moment. And then switch to the hands and knees for tabletop. And we'll do our trusty cat cow. We probably do this pretty often, so we're always working on the spine on some level, hopefully in class. Inhale as you tilt up, and then as you exhale, pull the lower abdomen in. Tuck your chin towards your heart. Press through the mat. Exhale, and then inhale. Upward. Keep the forehead relaxed, and then exhale. Arch the back. Inhale up. Exhale. Two more on your own. Come back to neutral. And then reach your right arm up, look up. And then exhale your right arm through, flip your right palm up. Lower down to your right shoulder, the right side of your head. So you should be facing towards the left side of the mat. You can walk your left hand forward and lower down to the left forearm. That means dropping that left elbow down. And breathe here. Stay with the breath, nice restorative, good for the spine, mid-spine opener. Let your jaw relax. sure the palm is facing upward, lower down to the left side. Walk your right hand forward so that you can release your elbow and your right forearm down onto the mat if possible. Relax your jaw, breathe. What can you let go of? So in yoga, it's more about what can we let go of in each pose. 
Mm -hmm. Maybe it's tension in the eyes or the fingers. In the face, the muscles around the mouth. And then come back up. Good. And then step the right foot up. <clears throat> now, you may... That's why it's good to have a couple of... I, like, I have a couple of different thicknesses of blankets always handy when I'm practicing. You could take... Um, it's nice to take one of these more cottony Mexican blankets maybe in the center of the mat for some of these series and step the right foot up and then the left knee is on the cushion it's just a nice thing to do for your knee or maybe you've got an actual little cushiony mat those are great <clears throat> and come up sit up straight good and then bring your hands to your hips and then crawl your right toes forward. And then shift forward so we're sinking, so we're lengthening. We're not collapsing, so we don't want to collapse all the way down. We want to keep some tension. And then squeeze the elbow, elbows together. And then the thumbs are wrapping around the lower back. And then squeeze shoulders together and drop your head back. And breathe here. Fingertips forward, flip your left, right foot up, fold forward and out. So the idea is we start to we try and straighten that front leg as much as you can. If your leg is somewhat straight, make sure that it's straight ahead. If your leg is straight, then you can start to tuck the chin and bring your forehead towards the knee. Press the right foot back into the mat, move it back in, come back up, and just do a nice supported spinal, our first, well it's not really our first spinal twist because we just did one, but this upright spinal twist. So think about pulling your belly in, start pulling in and then making room, and I like to press my hand into the right thigh, and then bring your left elbow just above the right knee, open your palm, your fingers are pointing forward, and then reach your right arm up and then exhale your right palm to meet your left palm and then your right elbow is pointing straight up so you want to keep your fingers back a little bit so you almost want to bring your thumbs towards your sternum just like when you're standing with your hands in front of your heart it might not be happening yet but kind of aim for that and then twist up look up breathe deeply Face is relaxed, the jaw is unhinged, the eyes are soft, the mind is calm. You've got to breathe with some effort through this compression. Maybe you feel the side and the back of the lung of the rib cage and the lungs expand. And then release the hands. And then bring that right knee to meet the left knee. And step the left knee up. And come on up. Always having to look. Okay, there we go. Check the monitoring the systems. Okay. And then come on up. Pretty much your knee is over your ankle in this, in this little kind of mini back bend here. Again, your hands are on the waist, thumbs wrapping around. And then <clears throat> sink down a little bit. You might, well, you could crawl your toes forward a little bit. Sink down, but don't collapse down. So we still want that energetic support happening internal between the legs. Good. And then uh, squeeze the shoulder blades together. 
almost like you're trying to touch the elbows to the inner elbows together and then drop your head back any amount opening up the heart chakra the throat chakra breathe here up bring your fingers forward on either side crawl your left toes forward flip your left foot up any amount you know in these poses some of these sometimes if you're really new to this work it's really helpful to use blocks in this pose you know you can choose your height and a nice platform your hands evenly pressing in maybe pull them back a little bit so we're working on straightening that front leg. You can pulse it a few times. No worries. Good, inhale back up. Press that left foot back, knee over ankle, straight. Coming up for our spinal twist to the left. Okay. Again, I like to kind of pull that midsection in, create, pressing my left hand into that upper left thigh to start to start to create that twist. Right? We're starting to create it. Bring the left elbow, uh, the right elbow just above the left knee, flip the palm open, fingers are pointing straight ahead, and then reach your left arm up and then press the palms together. The left elbow comes, points straight up. See if you can pull your hands back a little bit. Oh, I just felt a pop in my spine, my lower spine. Breathe here. Maybe look up past the left elbow if that's open to you. It might not be. Sometimes you sway a little bit. I almost lost my balance there. It's all part of it, you know? It's all part of the fun and exploration of spinal twists. So we're holding this tension. Sometimes there's tension. Maybe back off a little bit. Maybe you're going too far. If you can't find stillness and your breath is really, and you're struggling with your breath, back off a little bit. But definitely keep breathing, no matter how far you are in the twist. And then release back up. Whew. And then bring that knee back and then press the ball mounts of the feet into the mat. Since we're on our, since we've got this nice config, if you've got a, a nice cushion or, or a blanket, it's a nice thing to do. We'll open up the backs of the feet for a second. Broken toe pose. This might be a challenge. For some, you might have to stay on your hands or your fingertips and, and work towards bringing the, the seat down all the way in contact and then being able to come and actually sit on, I'm actually sitting on my heels. You might not be there yet, so please be mindful and cautious and aware, uh, you know, and ease into it. This could be your pose for now, with just on the fingers. Good, flip the toes, hands press, and then just tap the tops of the feet a little bit. Kind of a nice thing to do for the feet. If you live, if you live in, you know, cities or climates where you have to wear shoes all the time. In Chicago, I think everybody has like eight or ten varieties of shoes for all types of conditions. And we have jackets and coats and sweat. We, have, <laughs> well, that's living in a cold climate. Okay, and then you can move anything off to the side. And then come into a down dog. So we'll just lengthen out the spine here. Before we do a stillness, walk the feet back and forth. Really pedal out. Really feel the backs of the legs opening and the hamstrings. Because all that gets connected to the hip and the lower back. So really it's all, we're always working on the spine in a sense because everything is so connected. But, and then come to stillness. And maybe you do a little sway of the hips to one side to the other. You could really um, make it more pronounced by pivoting on your feet, 
spinning your heels to one direction and lowering your hip. Kind of an interesting thing to try. But your hands have to be, your hands are anchored, your fingers are spread, and your fingers are pointing straight ahead, avoiding the in turning. You don't want your hands turning inward. That's gonna stress your, heel, uh, your uh, wrists out. Good. And then look up to your hands and tippy toe all the way up and bring your feet hip width it's about hip width and then parallel so notice my feet are not turning outward because that's going to affect the rotation of the hips they're not turning inward because that's going to impede because of the knees so we want that nice uh, parallel feet parallel good and then hip width then see if you can press your palms about 12 inches in front of the feet your hands are shoulder width. You might need to bend your knees a little bit and then drop your head and shift your weight into your hands. Like, like, you're, like the beginning of a handstand. And if you never do a handstand in yoga, so what? They're cool. I mean, they're cool to watch and so, sometimes they're fun to do, sometimes they're not. So they're, they're, they're okay, they're, they're great. I mean, they're handstands, right? But you can do, actually, you can do other uh, inversions as you get into yoga. So I just made that mention because sometimes people, um, if they're new to yoga, they think, oh, I'm gonna have to learn how to do a headstand. No, some people should never do headstand. And you don't have to do a headstand or a handstand to have an absolutely amazing yoga practice in your life that gives you so much benefit. So that's my lecture on inversion on handstands and headstands. They're fun, but not necessary. Okay. And then slowly start to peel up. Keep the chin towards the heart. Keep the arms loose. Keep the knees bent. Take your time. Pull your lower abdomen in just below the navel. Keep your core active a little bit, but your arms loose and your chin towards your heart. Slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, Oh, that's such a good thing to do. I'm telling you that your body's going to thank you for doing this. And then once you get to the top, um, I'm just going to adjust my camera just a wee bit because I feel like I'm not getting quite the length. There we go. And <clears throat> top of the mat, and then hands in front of the heart, and then inhale and reach up. And as you exhale, reach your left hand forward and your right hand back. Left hand forward, right hand back. And then wrap the back of your right hand around your left waist. So you can see I've wrapped my right hand around my left waist. My left hand is facing forward. Good. And I'm twisting, or I'm looking back over my right shoulder. Pull that right shoulder back. Keep reaching the left fingertip straight forward, keep twisting back, breathe. And then exhale, release that left hand down, release the right hand, palms together, inhale, reach up, look up, and then reach the left hand back, right hand forward. Keep reaching the right fingertips forward, and then wrap the left hand around the right waist. Feet are planted, hip width. The feet should be hip width, and then turn towards that left shoulder, pulling that left shoulder back. Keep breathing. And then release the palms in front of the hearts. Still standing, feet parallel. The feet could come a little closer together now. Uh, but make sure that your feet aren't pointed outwardly. Right? There's a tendency for some, it's just, you know, everybody has little habits in their body. So this is, if you're standing like this in yoga, it will cause a problem. <laughs> so uh, bring your feet parallel. I, I would say in some of the poses, better to have your feet slightly pointing inward in standing position. Good. Good. Palms together. Inhale, reach up, look up. And then exhale your the left hand to your left thigh and reach your right arm over. I think I should probably reverse that, but we'll do it next time. 
and then reach, reach, reach. So it doesn't matter. One hand on one thigh and then the other top arm reaching over, a nice supported. So we're bending our spine this way, laterally, breathe. And then inhale, up, palms together, look up, and then reverse it. Exhale the other hand down, pressing into the side of the thigh, the leg, reaching. See if you can straighten that top arm, bring it alongside the ear if possible, any amount. So we, want to, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to go beyond where we can be, maintain our stability and our breath. If something is giving you a, a signal to not go that far, pull back, you know, just go, go incrementally. Good. And then inhale, reach the palms up, look up to the thumbs and exhale the hands back down for the heart. Still at the top of the mat. Good. And so bring your hands to your hips, bring your feet a little wider. <clears throat> Good. Hinge forward and then take your peace fingers and then grip your toes. So I'm going to walk close up to the camera because this is a tricky one sometimes for people. They can probably use a little bit more light. Um, a little bit more light. And uh, we're going to grab our big toes. So <clears throat> what I mean by that is, oh, I need more light in this space. I'm sorry about that. Let me just open up a little bit. And that's a little better. So by gripping toes, I mean, wow, I, when I walk into that light, you can't really, I'm going to go back into this light. It's better, actually better. So I'm actually taking my peace fingers and getting in between the first, the second toe and the big toe, and I'm actually gripping. You see, you can see I'm, I'm gripping with my peace fingers, then my thumb is, so I'm, I'm gripping the whole big toe <clears throat> with the peace fingers. <clears throat> and so then, once you have that grip, get that nice grip on the big toes, pull the lower abdomen in. Again, keep pulling inward, create space. Take a deep breath in, but keep pulling the lower abdomen in. As you exhale, fold forward. Now, the elbows point outwardly, so I'm actually bending my elbows to left to right and then drop the chin towards the heart. And we're trying to pull our face towards our knees and keeping the legs as straight as possible. So you might just be halfway or three quarters, that's fine. Just give it some effort. You know, always paying attention to anything that gives you a pain signal. Stop and back off. Don't push through sharp pain signals. It's the difference between pain signal and opening up a tight spot. There's a difference and only you know that. So you have responsibility for your own safety in yoga by honoring any signals your body is giving you, especially the pain signals. Breathe and then inhale up halfway. Release now. <clears throat> Either tuck the fingers under the toes. Maybe you can get the entire palm with the toes touching the inner wrist. So it's up to you. You don't have to do either one. You could just do the fingers, that's fine. Whatever work, whatever you can do that's comfortable for you. See if you can straighten the legs. Now the arms stay straight, somewhat straight, pulling our ears between our biceps. Again, pulling our face towards the knees. Shift your weight into the hands or the fingers, if possible. Jaw relax, breathe deeply. You gotta breathe through that compression into the side and the back of the lungs. That's, we've gotta to learn to do that in yoga. Good, and then inhale up, release. Bring halfway, press palms into shins. And then exhale the fingers down and step the right foot and the left foot back, lower down to the knees all the way down, lower down to the forearms, and then slide down. Pull your hands under your shoulders, little cobra. And then exhale all the way down, and then slide your forearms forward for sphinx. <clears throat> so the shoulders are over the 
the shoulder, elbow, right? And then you've seen the picture of Sphinx, that's right, it looks just like this. And then lift your abdomen, see if you can energetically, so we're not lifting up our physical body, the structure, we're pulling our lower abdomen inward, so we're lifting it off with the strength of our core, if possible. And then shoulders pull slightly back and down and pressing into the mat. You're pressing your hands and you're pulling your mat back towards you, letting the heels drop side to side, moving your heart forward. Now your face should be pointing straight forward. Breathe here. Good. And then exhale all the way down and bring your uh, <laughs> your forearms parallel to one another. I forgot. I suddenly was like, my brain stopped. I had brain stop. And then let your forehead rest on one forearm and just roll your forehead back and forth. It's a nice thing to do. <clears throat> it tells your body to relax. There's something, there's something with the forehead. There's a connection there in the brain. The, body so amazing in that way and there's all these little weird connections so and then once you have done enough of those rolls on the forehead and then come back up and then lower all the way down now <clears throat> if you have your glasses off you can keep them on or take them off it's sometimes nice to take them off because you're laying down and then bring your hands back and your palms up now this is a little bit of a strengthening position. And then the chin on the ground, looking forward. And then inhale up, look up, and then lift the palms up. Keep pressing the feet into the ground this time. Just a little bit, if you can lift up maybe to the, you know, third or fourth rib. Arms reaching back, the fingers reaching backward. Maybe lifting the palms up a little higher and keep the back of the neck somewhat long so we don't want to crunch our neck. Breathe. And then slowly exhale, slowly exhale down. Turn to one side and rest for a moment. Mm. We're gonna do one more. This time we're gonna do the same thing, lift up, but now lift, bring the legs and the inner edges of the feet together. And lift the legs, lift the hands, lift the legs up. Reach back with the fingertips, lift the legs up. Maybe come up a little higher. Sort of an activation of the abdomen, you'll feel it. Breathe, keep the back of the neck long. Keep the jaw relaxed, keep your forehead relaxed. Eyes are soft. with control, slowly lower down and turn to the other side and rest. And just for good measure, we'll try bow pose. If you're, if this is new for you, you know, you can watch or you can do the the flying Superman pose again if you want instead. But if you're trying it, bend the heels. Maybe you're just grabbing the top of the foot from the outside or the middle of the foot or the ankle. Eventually we get a little bit lower, you know, but you work towards that. And then start to lift up. Notice how I'm pulling my shoulders back and then activate the strength of your legs to pull your arms back lift your knees off the ground, point your toes up, lift all the way up. So the only thing on the ground really is your pelvis and your lower belly and breathe. And then slowly lower down with control release. Turn to the other, other side or whatever side you like for a moment. Back bends can be very emotional. You know, when we do them, they can be very sometimes triggering. 
that's when the breath and the awareness come in if we're going so far that we start to feel um, panicky back off of it and bring your hands under your shoulders and push yourself back up all the way up walk your knees forward Woo. okay Let's sit down and we'll do one easy nice refreshing spinal twist now that we're all warmed up for good measure and just bend your right foot bring your right foot to the crook of the left elbow and then your left arm can cradle it maybe you like it to come under the left arm can come under or, or the right arm can come under sorry so the right arm uh, the right foot <laughs> is in the left elbow or you could wrap around and grab the left wrist with the right hand and then tilt back forward so we don't want to collapse back in this we'll stay off the tailbone back, back and forth and then drop your right foot outside of your left knee and then again it's kind of pulling getting ready pulling the lower abdomen in now take your left hand wrap it around the right knee see how i'm pushing into my right thigh with my right hand and then creating some space and then reach the right hand back hugging that right knee upward with the left arm flex the left foot upward and then twist back so it's not so we're not really turning our head we're twisting at the spine breathe here and then exhale release counter twist stay here with your leg position bring your right hand into your right foot reach your left hand back so we'll kind of pose. Good. Exhale, release. Extend the right leg long. And bend the left knee. Bring the left foot into the crook of the right elbow. And you could cradle that left knee with the left hand, or you bring, bring the left hand under, or wrap it around and do the bind. Lift, lift back up off the tailbone. And you could rock back and forth. It's a nice refresher for the hip socket. And then release that left foot outside of the right knee. Flex the right foot up. So again, think about starting to create space, pulling that lower abdomen in, taking your time. <clears throat> Make sure that that left foot is fully planted. I'll show you, like so, it's really planted. And then make space and then right arm wraps around the left knee hugging that left knee in so we're not passive we're really hugging and lifting the heart up reach the left hand back and twist back breathe very nice and exhale release counter twist left hand comes to left foot right hand reaches back and breathe I had a thought about, I was watching, I'm watching Seinfeld because I wanted to watch something lighthearted recently. I always wondered, what would it be like if George Costanza was the yoga teacher? <laughs> and then I exhale. It'd be funny. Okay. Or, 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 or uh, Kramer. <laughs> ah, good. Just a nice forward fold. Bring the hands over the feet. Forward fold, any amount. Inhale back up. Just so make your way onto your back. Hug your knees, wrap one wrist to the other, and rock from left to right. Nice massage along that entire muscle group, along the spine lower back, mid back, along the shoulder blades, and come into a happy baby, grab the outer edge of the feet. You can use some arm strength, it's okay for your hip joints, pulling your knees closer to the ground. If you like to rock, you can rock in this one. And then release the feet down. 
Good. And bring the hands out, palms up, bring the knees and the ankles together. And then drop your legs to the right. And then turn and work towards the left. So we have one nice relieving spinal twist, no efforts. If your knees are really high up on the ground, or they can't, you can't get them close, you know, bring, have a block under your shin. That's a nice thing to do. You can even have a, a, a blanket on top of the block for extra. You could have a blanket in between the knees. There's all kinds of things you can do to help yourself to get into a pose, especially one of these restorative poses where we just want to sort of, it's more about releasing rather than holding. Then come back up, and if you use the block, bring it to the other side. Knees, shins parallel, so we don't want to squeeze our heels in towards our seat. We want to keep our shins parallel to the ground. Hands out, palms up, drop to the left. Turn your face towards the right. Come back up and prepare for your final rest of Shavasana. And for anybody that's watching, if you crave an inversion, you can always bring, if you know what you're doing, right? Within your practice, if inversions are part of your practice, you can do a little inversion before you come into uh, final Savasana resting. lower and mid spine melts, fingers release, let your hands release, the feet drop side to side, jaw release, eyes are closed, feel your eyes completely relax, sinking farther back in behind the eyelids. Easy breath, no efforts, let your tongue release. No restriction, just simple, easy breath in and out. Just notice the easy rise and fall of the belly. All effort is done. I'll bring you back up in a little bit.
uh, movements. Lean the fingers and the toes, take your time. You can roll your wrists and your ankles a few times. You can extend your hands back for one final lengthening. Maybe reach a little deeper between the fingers and the toes. And then as you exhale, release. And then walk your knees up. Take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, wrap your arms around and squeeze out your last full breath here. Until your next breath. And then roll to one side that works best for you. Usually it's the right side, but whatever works for you. And come back up. And we did it. And I hope you feel refreshed. I actually feel refreshed from that. I was a little bit cranky at the end of the day, I think. And somehow yoga always clears out all the gunk from the, from the day. And maybe we'll have a more calm, relaxing day. Drink a lot of water. Try and eat something healthy. That's a big part of yoga, I think, as we get into yoga, is that we start to pay, be a little bit more aware, you know, to the best of our ability. Who doesn't like to, you know, have like snacks and stuff and just sit on the couch in these days and check out. It's perfectly, I get it, I do it. But especially after yoga, you know, to, you know, a piece of fruit, some water, you know, that kind of stuff really. I think, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you, here, I'm gonna give you a tip. I have a cucumber, an organic cucumber that I've had in my fridge for like five days. I'm gonna take it and then I bought some tomatoes from a farm stand, thing, like, far, like farmer's market type. And I'm gonna make a cucumber and tomato salad. Like stuff like that, you know, after yoga, and it tastes so good for some reason. Anyway, this is a little tip, you know, uh, whatever you got, you know, whatever you can do to nourish yourself and your body and be healthy and uh, all, all works together. Palms in front of the heart. We'll close with one deep ohm if you're joining. Three parts. It's ah, oh, mm, ohm. Take a deep breath in. Hey, namaste.